Hi and welcome back to the channel. Apologies, it's been a little while since the last update, but you may have seen the last one where we've done a, uh, shown you the foreground church, which we um, built together and that for our upcoming uh, Christmas game, which hopefully, hopefully touch where we could all get together and have a game in the group. Um, so today's video is the start of our Blitzkrieg early war German build. Um, it's been going quite well, actually, obviously COVID aside and everything else that's hit the bunker, but all clear of that now all isolation over and everything else so that's that's thumbs up um yeah so started building this prior to obviously all that happening um anyone who you may have heard me talk about it in the past and that where i'm a bit of a stickler with plastic figures i i get frustrated with plastic figures um i think a part of the processes and the problems are is in the tooling process where you see a nice three up and the company's showing you lovely figures and everything else but when they come to tool it for the plastic and that um you find that the arms look they look all over all over the place or sometimes the legs don't go on well or the bodies don't match the arms and so forth so i am very much a i'm a bit anal on this i'm afraid so excuse the language but there you know i am a bit sort of i, I like them to fit my plastic figures to at least look like they're, they're actually doing something and it looks like they've got some sort of motion and flow to them um so mel and i it was about three evenings uh put together all the figures for this this build um painstakingly because she knows what i'm like and be fair to her she had a lot of patience to go with me with it we did we cut them all out and we marked them all up because again the instructions in a lot of these kits are rubbish absolute rubbish they are just nothing goes together where you think it should go together or go or match up the arms with the heads or the bodies etc nothing goes as you think it would go but uh, like I said, about three evenings, we sat down and we marked it all out, marked out the sprue properly, what arms or what type of arms, what bodies, what legs, and, and all that sort of thing. And then painstakingly put the arms and then weapons to the arms, etc., to make it sort of, they look like they're actually in motion. Because that's what you want in the skirmish game. You want your guys to look like they're actually doing something. I mean, I, I, mean, I certainly do. This is something about me. When I'm playing games, I don't really care what the opponent's doing, my mates are doing, or whatever. I'm telling stories in my head. I'm, I'm like, yeah, that guy's going to do that. And I'm rushing up. And I, I actually sort of imagine myself actually in the table now and really getting immersed into the game, like, you know. So <laughs> it's um, so to me, getting the figures right, right at the start, will really enhance for me that immersion throughout all my games. And that's how I've always been in that in, uh, in game. Perhaps because I came originally from a D&D &D background and obviously that characterization and things like that. I don't know, but that, that's, that's just how I am. So what I thought I would do, as I said, I, 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 I'm going to show you one of the sections that we've built and painted up. We have done three and they're all more or less the same. Um, slight variation in a couple of like the NCOs or a couple of the other figures. But I certainly will sort of, you know, it is all the same. And the idea that I thought I'd have, I mean, it's up to you guys. Get a comment in below if this is what you want to see. As we progress a little bit more, do you want to see the progression of what we're doing? Um, or do you want to just see the whole showcase at the end? But I, it's up to you guys. I mean, I, I'm easy, I'm flexible in that. Um, and obviously, I can talk to you about, about the actual project and that that we're doing. Um, so sort of, I'll give you an overshot of what we're doing. I think I have spoke about it before, but it's case all new listeners haven't seen those videos yet. We plan on doing the counter-attack at Arras um, in May 1940, the British counter-attack. It was led by two columns. Basically, it was a left column, right-hand column. We're going to mainly concentrate on the left-hand side column. Um, hopefully, we can thrust through the German 7th Panzer Division line. Um, it's going to be a chain of command uh, game where we're... Well, I've wrote a campaign pack for it. Uh, it's, it's basically three tables... Um, and the guys have got, or the British players will have five games where they've got to try and get to the th end of the third table. Um, so, and obviously attrition rates, casualty rates, it's all going to play a part. What the, uh, you know, the commanding officer thinks of his platoon commander is going to take a part, play a part. Um, and obviously what the, platoon, the men in the platoon think of their platoon leader is going to play a part. Um, that's what I do like about Chain of Command, the flexibility and the command and control, is, it, it really does set it apart from any other game, World War II game that I've played. Um, and, in, in, and adding it into this campaign sense makes m much more sense and um, hopefully 
bit of tension and a bit of, bit, of, bit of fun from Melanoids running the game. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, but um, but yeah. So that's the idea. The guys will have their their own their own packs. The British player will have their pack. The German player will have their pack. They will give their platoon makeup. Any support assets that's available in this particular campaign that's, that they could choose with their support points when they enter the game, um, and also sort of giving themselves hopefully the, the, the right tools for the job to, to, to be able to play. Um, obviously, you know, it's not like a normal game where you play bolt action or you play a normal chain of command game or any other game where losing your men really is not really that much of a problem. In this, it will be because losing your men, it means the next game you haven't got as many or you haven't got much ac uh, 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 access to support level or your force morale's dropped because you're losing men and so forth. It all depends on what I say. The, the, the structure of Mel and I've put together, I've rewritten, it took me a few days, well, I say a few days, it took me more than a few days, but it took me, it took me a while to rework the At The Sharp End to play a mini campaign because it, it, the, the Sharp End is a supplement for Chain of Command, it's a free supplement online. Um, and it's designed to play longer lengths of campaign, the, the point size campaigns that two fat lardies sell. But with this, we thought, well, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to condense it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make up a smaller campaign that I can play over a day or two days and sort of get across to the guys, look, you know, this is what you've got. But given the flavour of it and the tension and the pressures that what the commanding officers would have had on the day, at the same time as hopefully give it a fun and sort of... Uh, festive sort of game and that but um, so without further ado I'll tell you what I do enough of me rambling I'll spin the camera around and I'll show you what we've done so far so what we have first up we have the uh, not quite the German infantry yet um, but I thought I'd show you you've seen last time in the uh, previous video I showed you a few figures and that that we've done the German uh, the none to the right should I say is a German shabby Nazi trick Obviously, somebody dressed up in a nun's disguise going out to sort of hinder the British lines. Um, I, I, that, I think, is going to be quite a bit of fun. Obviously, it's one of the German support points or support levels that they can have um, in, their, in their force makeup if they choose to, cho to take it into the game. And what that will allow them to do, there are several in the Blitzkrieg uh, Chain of Command handbook, but I've chosen this one particular one where it's sort of going to hinder the British, where they're going to try and bring on their uh, support units on this particular jump off point um obviously you're gonna have to start rolling the dice to see if the old shabby nazi tricks taking over and sort of like sort of putting the wrong word in the senior leader's ear like you know so but hopefully that'll be a little bit of fun and to the left obviously there's a british platoon commander a lieutenant there and he basically you've seen him before in the uh, army showcase for the bef um if you haven't and that you want to see the army showcase i'll add a couple of videos at the end of the video at the end of this video um, next to him, obviously, is a, is a 3 printed drinks cabinet. Now, again, this will be added into the British support list, which they, they freely can choose from their, their support points. And this will allow the senior leader to sort of pull out the drinks cabinet, pass out a bit of Dutch courage, that to the men, and rally off any excess shock or, for bolt action terms, pins um, that, 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 that's causing problems on a particular unit. And um, they basically roll a D6 and they can remove that many shock, shock markers from the, from the unit. So again, a little bit of fun in that. So yeah, I really quite like that. I thought, seeing that advertised online, so I thought, yeah, a little 3D printed drinks cabinet's perfect for, for, for this type of scenario. So I'll just sort of spin them up in that, and then that way you'll be able to sort of see what's going on, take a good look at them. But like I said, I think that, you know, things like this for me certainly adds a little bit of character into the game. Um, and then sort of, like I said, I just, that's the D&D &D player in me, the role player in me, I suppose. I like that sort of bit of flavour. Um, you may see on the back of the nun, it's got a stick grenade. You know, it's basically unscrewing and ready to pull the, pull the cord on the stick, stick grenade. That I think is excellent. I, I really, <laughs> every time I see that, I just chuckle, sort of like, you know, nun's outfit, like, you know, the habit on and everything. And then behind with this stick grenade. Um, yeah, the old drinks cabin and that. I think Mel painted that up and that's done a really fantastic job on that. Really does look like it's uh, been battered and worn and everything. You know, he's sort of carrying it around. You can imagine like Jeeves and that, you know, his, 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 his butler carrying his drinks cabinet across the battlefield, like, you know. So that could be like a little bit of fun. But uh, so there we are. So that's the uh, drinks cabinet and the shabby Nazi trick. 
So here we have then the first of the three infantry sections painted up. As I said, they've got another two done up already. The only difference is in the two sections and that, uh, or the three sections, so I say, is slight variation in a couple of the figures, uh, but mainly the NCOs uh, are slightly different. I have got a couple of the other NCOs to hand here, just to sort of show you that one there, and uh, this guy sort of pointing along like that. So there we go. So that sort of gives you sort of an idea there of the different NCOs. Um, I'll just move those out of the way. And the other thing that we've got as well is the other another machine gun team. This is a metal figures. Uh, if I just pop them in there and look like that. And what that'll allow me to do for chain of command, and what's on bolt action as well, it'll allow me to sort of have two flex, bit of flexibility in that the German infantry section in, in chain of command is we have a team with a light machine gun and a team of riflemen. But with this, I can make them a Panzer Grenadiers by taking out some of the riflemen um, and then putting the second light machine gun team in, and then so two light machine gun teams uh, with the NCO. And like with bolt action, obviously you can have two light machine guns in your section anyway, with pay a pen your points for that. So that's that, so that just takes that out of the way. And all three infantry sections have got that inbuilt flexibility to be able to play, play, be able to play both games. Um, all of plastic figures, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned it or not, but if I haven't, is from Warlord Games Bolt Action Range, the Blitzkrieg Miniatures. Um, and then, say, the metal figures there are part of their Blitzkrieg Miniatures range. Uh, most of it will be plastic. Um, there are some resin stuff that we have purchased vehicle wise, and that, and I'll, and I'll talk a bit more about that at a later date. But as you can see from the front there, I am quite a stickler for getting this. I really have been excited about this project. Um, I've always played, as I said before, in late war and that, and but I've really last this sort of last year, 18 months, I've really got into reading about the early war, and it's fascinating. And I think it's, I think there's a, all the equipment, if you look at it on paper, is, is much the much that, you know, all, both sides had good equipment for, for the time, and both sides had crap equipment for the time. So it does sort of really does lend itself to uh, to some sort of fun games, really. Um, with these the painting of these figures, we followed Travis Heights of Tabletop CP's painting recipe, and I will leave a link to his video in the description below. Brilliant video, really really good. The only slight differences and variations that we've done. We didn't go neat Agrax Earthshade over the figures. We, uh, we, well, we did, but we basically we thinned it down with some, um, oh, what do they call it? Is it Lamia Medium? So not water, but Lamia Medium. That keeps its consistency, but it allows it to flow better. So yes, we did sort of put it on neat, in that sense, but we, you know, by not losing any consistency of the, uh, of the, actual, of the actual wash. Um, and the only other thing we've done as well is, is, is we, after the wash, he goes back in and, and, and touches in like the uniform and bits and pieces. We've done that, but we also did an odd, an odd highlight here and there, just a little bit of extra. But that's it. But everything else is as Travis's video, exactly as he's done it. Um, a very, very easy to follow instructions. Brilliant video. And actually, en masse, these do look good. And I, and I do agree with what he says there. The base inside of it, I sort of just spin it around a minute, excuse fingers a minute, there we go. Basing wise, you may remember the British, um, the uh, BEF we done, we had them sort of like more of a sort of like a rural theme where they're defending sort of like hedgerows, woodland and things like that. So there's bits of tree bark, wood and everything else on their bases as well as sort of tufts and bits and pieces. With the Germans, we wanted something very similar um, where they're representing where they're coming across the open plains of France and coming from Belgium that into, into France um, and you know bursting their way through sort of the far, outer line farms. So hence the reason why you're on odd, when you see the army being built, you'll see there's odd sort of red bricks and stones and bits and pieces and that on the bases. When that's them representing the Germans, they've taken over the British positions and you know, the farm outlying farms etc and so forth. So piling up a bit of rubble and that around the outside. Now you may notice on all the figures there, we've painted on um, the on the epaulets and their and their collars, obviously their insignia. And you'll notice on the helmets, they've got their um, uh, uh, here markings on the right hand side and the left hand side. Those are absolutely micro transfers. I say I go order them from Warlord, and when I see them, I just passed them to Mel. I said, "You're doing that." I said because 
I would end up launching that. <laughs> too small. And to be fair to her, she's got the patience of a saint. And she has got to be got to put up with me. Um, but she, she really does brilliant work she's done putting those transfers on. I, I mean, I, I can't even see her now, you know, to be fair. <laughs> I'm sat next to her. But um, you may notice on the NCOs that come around his left shoulder, on his left uh, arm there, the, uh, his rank insignia. Again, that's a transfer you can get from Warlord. Really wanting to sort of give these guys um, some sort of variation, some sort of difference and that, and make them stand out a little bit more um, and so forth. But yeah, they're really, really pleased. So there we have it. That's the first of the three sections all done up there. Let us know what you think in the comments below. What are you building? Are you building any sort of early war, 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 World War II stuff? Let us know what you're doing, how you're doing it. And if you want us to sort of like show you the build as, as we're going and on, let, again, let us know in the description below. And um, we're quite happy to do that, you know, let you know as, as we're going along and then, you know, and then sort of keep you up to date of what's happening and, and how, the, how, how it's going to be affecting the game. So without further ado, Thanks very much for watching and tuning into this video. Sorry about my rambling, but I get excited sometimes when I'm talking about a project I'm passionate about. And uh, and I hope you all you guys are staying safe. I've been enjoying all your videos that you're putting out. Some cracking work out there. Absolutely brilliant, stunning work. Um, without further ado, guys, please stay safe. And I, and I really do hope you all get some games in soon. Uh, especially with VK there with his new man cave. <laughs> I bet he's itching to get in there and get a game going. And uh, so as I said, stay safe. Until next time, happy wargaming.